Hello again. What we see here is the uh, Sparta card from Pico Computing laid out and uh, ready to install in the machine. There are 16 FPGAs on this card, uh, Xilinx uh, Spartan devices. Uh, there's a lot of horsepower in here in terms of FPGA uh, resources. That's a single line lane PCI card. Here you say it in, see it installed into the motherboard of the uh, Dell computer the, and uh, hiding behind the video card there, ready to go. Well, we're back again, and we're just in the midst of doing the uh, synthesis and place and route of the generated VHDL using the Xilinx tools on the target machine. So we're actually compiling uh, on the Linux box now is what we're looking at. We're watching the... Uh, the Xilinx tools run through place and route. It won't take very long actually, as Michael's just said, it takes a, a, just a few minutes for this to complete um, because we're actually using a very small amount of the available resources in the FPGA and uh, probably just one multiplier uh, required out of the, uh, I don't know how many are available, over a hundred yep. uh, in this about Spartan a, device. About a hundred for this device. Yeah. So when this finishes, we'll be able to look at uh, a couple of pieces of information in the report. We can look at a utilization report that will tell us how much of the FPGA was used. Um, uh, keep in mind, again, there are 16 FPGAs on this card, and we're actually only compiling for one of those uh, for this test. Uh, in a moment, uh, Michael will show us how we access those various FPGAs as devices under Linux. So there, if we can just stop there, yeah. We can see, see the utilization report, if you can just scroll up and capture that. There. So you can see there, uh, in terms of uh, mult 18 by 18s, so it takes four multiply blocks to make one floating point multiply. So we're using 3% of the available multiply blocks in the device, a small amount of the RAM. Uh, slice count, only 4%. Uh, so you can see we're using a very small amount of the uh, resources for this test this single uh, random number generator. Uh, again, there's 16 FPGAs on this board, so we multiply that uh, by 16. You can imagine how much computing resource is available to us in these FPGAs. Another thing that we would find in this report is what the clock speed is going to be of this, uh, of this application when it's generated as hardware. Do okay, so the place, and route, the place and route has, uh, has finished now. And uh, so, uh, Michael, maybe you can show us how we can see the, uh, the board that's plugged in uh, through the, the slash dev directory. Sure. Um, so, um, Pico's done a pretty good job at making each of the FPGAs look like a device, so you, a Linux device driver. So if you just do, um, you can list them in the dev uh, and they're all called Pico uh, 1 through 16. Oops. There. So you can see there's uh, Pico 1. So that's the first FPGA. And then there's uh, 16 of them on here. And there's 16. Okay. So for this so test, we're just going to be using one of these FPGAs. Um, so a very small part of the of only one FPGA. We have a very small part of just one FPGA. So. We can imagine that uh, for this random number generator, if we're feeding a large complex simulation of some sort, we could have multiple random number generators, uh, many of them in each FPGA, that are communicating in parallel with, with other computational kernels. Okay, that's, um, so, so all the Xilinx tools, they generate, it generates a, a bit file, what's known as a bitmap or a bit file, and it's, it's this file right here. And that's actually what's the, the firmware that's going to program the FPGA. So we're going to use that to, um, we're going to use some, uh, the PSP generates uh, some code that will load the, in that program and then um, uh, run it, basically. So let's try that. Okay, hold on a second. So um, this command right here is the, uh, the software side uh, command. And then it's going to, I'm, I'm going up a couple directories to that bit file that we just generated right there. So now it's loading the bit file. Okay, it's done.
So it, it loaded the bit file, did a couple of read-write tests to the board, and then um, generated some random numbers. And here they are. That's great. And those random numbers would, would uh, presumably match the random numbers in desktop simulation. Um, in terms of performance, uh, because this is a, uh, a pipelined loop, uh, and as we saw in the, uh, in the optimizer earlier, that pipeline loop has a latency, has a rate of one cycle. So in the hardware, we could expect at a rate of 66 megahertz to get 66 million random numbers generated every second from one of these uh, processes. And of course, we can stack up multiple of these processes, uh, scale them up in parallel, and also pipeline them. Uh, in this particular example, the random number generators were pipelined with the, uh, the temper to normal function. So um, that's, a, that's a very, very important technique in uh, targeting an FPGA to create pipelines of parallelized uh, functions as we did here. Pipelines of pipelines, if you will. Actually, if you think about it, in this example, there are three levels of pipelines because we've got the two pipeline processes. Each process has pipeline loops. And then the pipeline loop for temper to normal, as we saw, has a pipeline floating point multiplier. That's a very important aspect of what these tools can do for you, is help you to, to develop these highly parallel, highly pipelined algorithms. Well, this concludes our uh, quick demonstration of random number generation on the Sparta card. To put this in pers into context, what we have done is one part of a larger Monte Carlo simulation that's currently under development. This particular Monte Carlo simulation is a financial options trading simulation, options valuation simulation. The, uh, the complete application will have random number generators that temper to normal, as well as a computation kernel that will do an iterative calculation to evaluate an options value uh, over time, a European options in this case. As we've seen, the random number generator is fed by the initialization routine. This then feeds into a temper function. That goes into the valuation. That's the application that's currently under development at Impulse. Once again, we thank you for your time today, and if you have additional questions or want uh, a one-on-one -on -one, uh, session, a webinar, for example, we'd be happy to do that for you. Uh, please contact us at uh, Impulse, and uh, thank you, Michael, for your help today. You're welcome. Bye now.